Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. We've got something to address this time. So if you have been following the channel, this is my office. This is where I do my work or pretend to do my work uh, and my live streams and all that kind of stuff. But there has been a sans aquarium in here since we moved into the new house. So we're gonna sort that out today. I had lots of ideas milling around, but just to get something in, I thought I'll do a nice, cheap, easy, little bit of aquascaping uh, with a, an old tank that I've brought from the old house and I wanted to base it around something a little bit special. This is a decoration that was sent to me by Fishman Aquatics. You might have seen a few collaborations I've done with the guys over at Fishman Aquatics. It's a local fish shop based in Oldham in Greater Manchester. Definitely go and check it out, it's well worth it if you're ever in the area. Um, but they've also got a website, you can check out all the stuff on the website. But we have a bit of a running joke where every now and again they'll send me a, a care package and it's usually something like a pot noodle. Um, but once they sent me something that was actually pretty cool. And they sent me this ornament a long time ago actually and I've never really had anywhere to put it or I've been in the middle of breaking things down and not really wanting to set up new tanks. But I really like this and I'm thinking if I can set up this tank here um, using this as the kind of centerpiece for the aquarium when I do aquascapes, it's generally not that planned out or not that thought through. I kind of just mess around with things, move them around until I get something that I kind of like. Um, so this will be the first time I've tried to do some kind of theme or some kind of um, base for an aquascape. And at first glance, this kind of evokes um, desert, it evokes um, kind of rustic, stony, wastelandy type thing. Um, the obvious thing to do, or most people might be thinking, well, oh, just stick loads of plants in these um, branches and you can make it a tree and it can look like a living tree and that would work and that would be very cool. But I kind of like the bareness, the barrenness. Um, so I'm thinking of doing something a little bit barren. I do want to have plants in the aquarium, so we are going to plant up the aquarium. I've been to the local pits at home uh, and bought a bunch of Tropica plants um, just because they were on offer and that's really what spurned me into doing this. Everything else that I've got for this scape is going to be old stuff that I'm reusing so I've collated a little box full of stuff here. We've got a heater, we've got a light, we have a bunch of stones that I really like the look of these stones. Um, what I've done is I've also got some smaller ones and smashed smash them all up to create some kind of rubble because I like the idea or I like the look of having the larger stones but having them break down in size so it looks a lot more natural and um, I think that'll go well. So I've got lots of little tiny bits of rubble for a filter. I've got one of these Oblong Solutions hang on back filters with UV light in it. Um, great little filters. Keep as chips really effective as well. I think we'll hang that on the back, as the name would suggest. For substrate, I kind of went in between a few ideas. Um, I was thinking of just going plain um, play sand, because that always works well. Thinking of doing a dirtied tank and getting some like, regular old compost and capping it with the sand. Um, but what I'm actually going to do is reuse some old substrate from an old tank. So I've kept all the substrate from all my old tanks. It should be really nutrient rich. And I think it'll match this kind of barren, wastelandy type um, atmosphere that I'm trying to create. It could be totally wrong, but the only way I'm going to find out is if we just give it a go. So, let's get on with it. So this is the tank, it's a small dual tank. Um, it used to have a lid and everything, but I've kind of converted it into an open top tank. Got my black vinyl backing stuck to the back of it. Um, other than that, Plain box standards tank. It's about two foot wide, about a foot tall, 15 inches back, something like that. Um, and in terms of the substrate, this is what I was talking about here. Um, this is a mix of all sorts, really. It's got sand, it's got gravel, it's got eco complete, it's got all kinds of things in here. Um, it's just, I've got a big bucket full of old substrate so I can reuse it in new tanks. Um, and I think it's just going to fit in with the look that I'm trying to achieve. I might be wrong, but we'll give it a go. Um, so first things first is get the substrate in and then try and get some kind of landscape that I'm happy with. So 
I do have proper aquascaping tools somewhere, and they are a really good idea for this kind of thing, but I've got no idea where they are. So I'm just going to use my hands to kind of spread this out. My general approach to this type of thing is I want it sloping from back to front, and usually a little bit of side to side as well. So we kind of have a, a top, a high side towards the back. And my general viewing angle will be this, further away than this, but this kind of angle. So I want the high side to be over there. So as everything kind of leads up to that, and it makes it look a lot bigger. It just it kind of tricks the eye if you do it like that. So I want to get more and more over to this side. And we might have a second hump over this side. This will collapse over time because I'm not putting anything in to strengthen it. Um, but I'm going to start with it a little bit more exaggerated than I want it to end up because once I get the planting done and move some rocks around that will also help the side where things are going to go and the rocks will help hold things back but I'm just trying to get a kind of general outline at the moment um, so I'm happy with that as a starter next I want to place uh, the main ornament and some of the larger rocks just to make sure that they look right but what I might also do is put the light on here so as I can see things a little bit better So I'm going to switch the camera around so you can see it from the angle that I will be looking at it from. So what I'm kind of trying to achieve is evoke the thought that this is some kind of rocky outcrop in a desert wasteland um, that's had a tree that's grown up and it's pushed the rocks apart and they've had some rocks fall down and this is what's been left over and then over time the trees died away and then when I get the plants in there it's the plants are going to try and start to take back over again. So I'm going to be planting the plants in and around the rocks and the tree rather than on the tree itself. And it's in my head. <laughs> in my head, it's meant to look like a long time ago all this happened. There was rock falls, etc. And now it's starting to replant again. So we'll see if I can do that with the limited amount of plants that we've actually got for this build. Uh, and then we need to tidy it up and clean it and things like that. But so far, I'm kind of happy with this. I'm not entirely sure about this one, whether I want this up high, but I kind of like how it mirrors this uh, with the, the rock fall in here. So we'll see, we'll give it a go. Now comes the part of the video where I murder some Latin names. So for plants, we've got three of the mini pots and three of the regular pots. We've got uh, Bacopa carolina or Car Caroliniana. Um, we've got some, one of my favorites, two pots of Limnophilia sessiflora. So I love this stuff, it's absolutely brilliant. I know this spreads like wildfire, um, but it can also take really aggressive trimming and I can shape that to anything that I want to. So I've got a couple of pots of that and that will overtake this tank in no time if I don't look after it. And then for the bigger pots, I've got some Leliosepsis, no, Lili Liliopis brasiliensis grass or it's going to look like grass, that's what I'm going to use it for. Um, we've got some Storogene Rippins. And last but not least, we've got some Crips. So, Cryptocorine Willisini. Willisi, Willisi, Willisi. So, a bit of a 
higher sprouting one. So we're going to dot these around um, and then see if I'm happy with it and fill it up with water. So I'm just thinking now, wondering where I want to have the filter. Um, if, I kind of want to have it at this side, but that would be really right in the eye line. Um, so I'm probably going to put it over here. But that's also where I wanted to have the Sissiflora bunched up over there. With a few dotting through here as if it was creeping back. So I might put them a bit over as background plants over this side. Um, with some of the smaller ones around this side of the rock. But we'll see. We'll have a play around and see if we like that. Um, I think I want to start with the... Not that one. I think I want to start with a crypt because that's kind of almost going to be the centerpiece plant. In such a small tank, small plants can be centerpiece plants. Um, so we'll get it out. Um, really quite healthy. I mean, these were like, I think the lady said that, oh yeah, we're getting rid of all these because they're almost dead. But this one's pretty much healthy as you would expect. So we'll get the pot off, the plastic pot off. We'll break off most of the rock wool and as you can see you actually get a bunch of plants it's not just one plant so this one is at least four or five that are all stuck together with the rock wool um, but I'm going to put them fairly close together and have them as like a, a main centerpiece so I think I want them kind of here this side of this rock some of the grassier ones around the front and the side. So I'll we'll separate that and get that in. I'm hoping not to have too many problems planting with these because they are fairly, with the mixed substrate, I've got a fairly good um, ability to plant it without them. Without any danger of them just floating away, which sometimes happens. I'm just using them to these tweezers to get them in, give them a twist, let go and pull out. And that should hold them in place. Next I'm going to, the order I'm doing this is the ones where I've thought this through and I think I know where I want to put them. So they're the ones I'm going to plant first and then the rest I'll just put where I think they look good once the other ones are in, if that makes any kind of sense. So again, really healthy looking plant, can't fault the Tropica stuff for that. Um, pull off the rock wool. Just tease it away so as not to destroy any roots or anything like that. So this one as you can see, is actually a poop ton of different plants. So what I'm going to do is just take small bunches and bunch them around where I want them. The storage ripens again, looking like a nice healthy plant. Very green. So the idea I had for this one, again, several plants in here is to have them around the tree, growing through the tree. So very much not trying to imitate a tree, but to show, show growth, new life after old life and all that kind of stuff. I'm sounding very hippy dippy with all this, but I hope you know what I kind of mean. A similar sort of thing with the Bacopa, the Caroliniana. Um, again, kind of trying to focus them up towards that back corner. I think I've done really well with this. <laughs> All these plants look really quite good. So this is coming in one of these little baskets. And what I've tended to do in the past with these is just kind of open out the basket a little bit. And as you can see, the roots are growing through. I don't know if you can see roots are going through the basket and up here as well but this creates a great little base so I can bury this um, and it makes sure that it's not going to float away so this is going to go behind the tree 
but I don't seem to have enough space behind the tree to get it in. So I might need to dig a little hole. Feed that in there. And then can I try and backfill the little hole that I've made? So they're all kind of wilting and wilting at the moment, but once the water's in, that should pick up a little bit. Right, so that just leaves me with the two sets of Sissiflora, which, like I say, I'm going to concentrate on that side at the back and near the wall. We'll put this one right in the corner, dig a little hole, place basket, fill in little hole. And that should ensure that they stay right where they are. And like I say, this stuff sprays like wildfire, so it might look a bit funny right now just having one there. But in a few weeks, that'll be right to the top. And you just keep trimming, replanting, trimming, replanting, and I'll be able to fill this tank in no time. So that's my starter. That's my start of my aquascape. It does look a little bit bare, so I might be fighting off algae issues and things like that. So I might see if I can find a few more plants in the weeks to come. Maybe cut from other tanks and add them in. Um, but I'm kind of happy with that. I just wanted to grow in. That's always the most frustrating part about starting tanks is you need time for everything to settle. But already it's kind of got the little jungly feel of the wasteland that's been rediscovered and reinvigorated with some greenery. So now all we need to do is fill it up and have a little think about stocking and what we're going to stock in there. There we go, that's it all filled and planted. Uh, just got the filter running. Made a couple of changes to what we talked about earlier. So what I've done is I've moved the filter from rather than putting it on that side, I've moved it over to the other side. I just thought once the Limnophilia sessiflora gets up there, I don't really want the water crashing back down on it. And it's hidden quite well on that side. So it's not too bad. The other thing is I haven't put a heater in quite yet. This one just looks too obtrusive. Um, so I have just ordered another one that's black and a lot smaller that I can hide on the right hand side a lot easier. But I might not use a heater at all because it's quite warm up here anyway. So we'll see how we go on with that. Which leads us on to stocking because that might decide whether or not I need to keep a heater in there. Um, I have some ideas, but my main idea is just to have some of my rarer endlers in there. So my shtick endlers. Um, I was thinking about putting them in there, or some of them, or maybe even the wild guppies, or some kind of small fish, having them in there, really colourful, intricate little fish, I thought they'd do really well, but I've got little explosions going all over my head saying, no, go for pea puffers, no, get something else. So I'm going to reach out to you guys, give me some inspiration here. What would you do? Let me know in the comments what kind of things you would stock in a tank this size. So you, I've shown you the size, obviously you can't keep anything like big piranhas or arowanas or anything like that. But I am genuinely really interested to see what you would keep in something like this. But thank you for joining me in this one. If you're interested in this kind of thing, please consider clicking that subscribe button. If you want to contribute even more, you can click the join button and become one of the adventurers. Um, but thanks very much just for watching the video. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye!